Hey everybody, it's Tyler at the Wisconsin Regional Check-in team number 2202 Beast Robotics. Uh, Beast had a fantastic first event, seated number one uh, just a couple weeks ago uh, and went all the way to the finals. Uh, and they've done some great improvements upon their robot as well too. Take a look at 2202 here, uh, really just nice compact robot machine. We're going to talk about some of the new iterations they have uh, going up to the uh, substation uh, control and talk about some position control. All this and more coming up about Beast Robotics here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge-up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Alec, let's talk about some of the mechanical features uh, on this robot's gone through. I'd love to hear about, too, uh, what have you improved from last event to this event, because I remember watching your first event, and you were pretty much a low robot, right, from scoring. Most of the time that I saw, you really get the number one seed that way. But now here, you've gone a bit more. So talk about what's gone into your structure that way. Yeah, to start off, uh, at our last event at St. Louis, we may or may not have forgotten our entire arm. Oh. <laughs> so uh, the entire arm is, um, we've been designing that uh, over the past couple of weeks. Uh, we put it on the robot just a week ago, and we have gotten it working very effectively. So we can score low, mid, and high now. So to, to start off with our su subsystems, we have, we'll start off with our intake. So it's a plexiglass intake, uh, four bar linkage. Uh, we bring it down and uh, are able to pick up cones and cubes off the ground. Uh, usually we'll use this to score in the hybrid node as well. So bring it down. And then uh, we have the intake automatically raised back up every time we finish. So from there, the game piece goes into what we call the car wash. So uh, it's four shafts uh, with um, different wheels on it. We intake the cube and it holds it there until we need it later. Um, from there, it goes right into our claw system. And uh, we have wheels that can intake the cube or cone from the uh, car wash and bring it up and score it from there. So from here, we can go to our mid position and our high pos position. When you're looking, you said uh, at your first event, you kind of forgot the arm. So what part exactly was not on the robot? This entire thing. The whole thing, man? The whole thing. Okay. So we went to our St. Louis competition with just our intake and car wash. Sure. And uh, we relied on speed and driving to really... Uh, to fill the entire hybrid node, or all nine of the hybrid nodes, and get ranking points. Yeah, I mean, obviously it worked out well for you seated first at the event, right? So, like, you know, looking, looking there, obviously good strategy and good way to go. Uh, now that this is ball it has your strategy changed uh, throughout a match now? Um, it has slightly. Sure. So, especially for qualifications, ranking points are very important. Mm -hmm. So, we have decided to continue scoring low and get three links on the bottom, and then from there, we can uh, use our arm to score mid and high to get that fourth ranking point. So you're prioritizing the low ones first and then going at, after the higher notes after that, right? Yes. So, I mean, that's still the right way to go, I think. You know, when we look at teams and, and the strategy in play, it always confuses me why teams aren't going low first because uh, it seems to be the best way to do that. So I'm glad to hear that your strategy has, you know, continued to go through on that route as well. Uh, something I want to ask you is uh, on this uh, wrist kind of this wrist area here. So you got multi-stages as you go through. When you're looking at designing from that perspective, uh, why was this route the best route to go for Beast Robotics? So our design priority was to be low to the ground sure. and have a low center of gravity. Now, th this allows our robot to be very fast and uh, not be very tippy and uh, allows for more speed. So in the design of our arm, we decided to go with a three-stage system to reach the high. And then we also have what we call an elbow. And this can is independently rotating uh, with the wrist. And uh, we are able to get a very high range of motion to uh, score anywhere that we need to. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the programming and positional control that's gone to this. Uh, Nathan is going to discuss more on that side and how all this kind of gets integrated together. We'll, we'll see maybe a little bit more of that game piece come through and talk to us more about it. 
Yeah, sure. So uh, in terms of positional control, we just have some constants in the code that basically tell it all the positions that it goes to. Now, the thing that's really important, considering that it does have four degrees of freedom, is specifically when we're taking a look at when we're moving from place to place within these constants, right? Because we can't like be all the way back here, and then all of a sudden the arm just swings out and like hits something, and like we've done that too many times, and we've broken the chains. So one of the most important parts of our programming has actually been to ensure that we're safely moving and we're not going to break anything. So I mean, I guess uh, so. And all the pathing is out automatically. So let's return to home. Um, yeah. So this comes back, and then uh, so. This is a kind of like our home traveling position where we don't have anything with it. And let's go to travel with a piece. Um, traveling with a piece. Yeah, so then like see, it knows to float out and then it flips the arm outside of the frame and then comes back down and then here usually we would have a piece, it would be clamped down here. So that kind of intelligent uh, tracking ensures that we don't break anything like we've already broken the chain a lot. Um, and so yeah, that uh, going on behind that uh, is kind of uh, really important for us. And then otherwise, yeah, just I mean switching between the positions, um, I guess, so here like, here, usually, let's go out to uh, substation pickup, and we'll show you how we pick up. Uh, so there's actually a lot of automation. So whenever we click that, right now, the wheels are running. Um, and also, can we get a, this is cone, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is a cone. So we have a light gate cone. there, cone. Um, we have a light gate there, and then uh, it will automatically close. Um, so again, that just lets work on the drivers, detects it, boom, closes it. And at this point, we would return to our traveling position while we're going across the field. And then we would let's go. Uh, And then we have something really similar for the cubes. I guess let's just go right away. Uh, yep, so then after we score, we would come back um, and then get right away back to the pick up uh, cube, right? All right, so that lets you cube. And then note for the cube, it's just in addition, uh, the operator now also holds down uh, one of the triggers and that ensures that we don't close the claw when the light is detected, but you can see that the wheels have stopped spinning. So we are able to fully integrate that. And then let's just do uh, psycho. So bring it back to travel. Um, and then let's score high this time. All right, so then, yeah, that integration right there, you can see it's really smooth, and we've really been trying to cut down our cycle times by having all the parts move at once, not just, like, you know, one part move and stuff. So that, combined with the fact that we had to be really careful with the claw, has caused a lot of programming time. Uh, but in the end, it's worked out pretty well, and at least I'm pretty happy with how smooth it is. So Last thing I just want to ask you is, uh, I know, uh, are you just running a couple of beam breaks on kind of each of the intakes because you said it would stop you automatically? Yep, so we have uh, yep, the light gates there, the beam breaks here, and same thing, uh, we have one actually right up here. Um, and then... Uh, within our intake here. And then we also actually, they're not on right now, but you can see two color sensors here, and then we have a third one here. That's going to help to detect with what orientation we're in. This is actually using a custom circuit. Um, it's using a multiplexer switch but that's connected to the uh, I2C port on the reel. Well, Beast Robotics, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us more about uh, your robot and your team. Uh, like I said, great, uh, great run at your first event. I'm sure you're looking for even more here as well too. And wish you best of luck here at the Wisconsin Regional and beyond. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.